Welcome to the Pit of Doom. If you've been following this series long enough, you know that this six-year-old house has an unfinished basement that technically can't really ever be finished because it's not deep enough with footings. And today we're gonna build a secret door. So in the last episode, if you guys seen, we did all the flooring in the house except for this section. We need to do something here. And if you remember, if you're the old school OG follower, what we did with this abandoned house, the guy built this kind of makeshift little closet that had a secret door in it to walk down. Well, it wasn't really secret, but down, crawl down into this basement that had a chicken coop and all this weird stuff. So after putting our brains together of where we could actually hide this access that has the furnace, the water heater, access to all the plumbing, electrical, uh, we decided that we would have to keep it here. So my vision here is we're gonna create a hidden door. I'm gonna have to fill in all this OSB stuff that is excess essentially. We'll create our little, almost like a windowsill kind of thing. And I got hardware that'll have a hidden latch, uh, hidden hinges, and uh, hopefully if we keep our fingers crossed, we'll be able to match the grain and the pattern of our flooring that it wouldn't be that discernible. But first thing we need to do right now is to start filling in this OSB section. I ripped in a little extra section here. We'll throw in our hangers, put our two by sixes in place, and hopefully we can move the sucker all the way up to here so this is not an obnoxiously big door. This has to be the nicest piece of flooring in this entire house. They're probably the only piece of flooring that doesn't squeak. That's super solid. I was especially excited to find out that my uh, 2330 seconds uh, OSB actually matches my three quarter inch planks here. So that's a good day. Uh, we gotta throw some particle board. As you can see, I got a three eighths quarter particle board going around. So we'll throw that here and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do with that end. Cause uh, I gotta make this thing somewhat square if we want the store to work. So we have about a three quarter inch gap perimeter around here. Then we have our subflooring or planks, and then we have our three eighth sheet on top. Now, the way I'm kind of processing this in my head, by the way, I'm shooting from the hip here. So there's, I've never done something like this before. It has to be weight bearing, load bearing. It has to be able to withstand wood movement in order for it to open and close appropriately. So there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So this is a cool experiment that I am uh, kind of dicing it up as I'm going. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to treat it like a rough and opening for a door, right? So like a pre-hung door will have your uh, sills and all that stuff jams all the way around. So I think I'm going to make my own door jam completely around with solid wood create a casing around it so the casing sits in this three quarter inch perimeter on top and then we'll fill in any gaps uh, in order to have a flush surface on top for this particle board. <sighs> That's what I got. That's what I got so far so let's see if it works. I was going to use brad nails just like regular door jams but I thought we were going to need some extra girth here so pocket holes all the way around. I know this area is not going to be square because I already measured all these joists are doing whatever they want to do over the course of 60 years. So we're going to have to do some shimming and that's, um, that'll definitely be fun. Guys, we need to start taking better care of our lawn. And that is why the sponsors of today's video is Sunday. Sunday is a lawn care plan with simple, friendly, powerful ingredients backed by nature. No harsh chemicals, no unwanted chemicals, ingredients you can trust, mystery-free ingredients. 
Simply connect to your Sunday pouch to your garden hose and start spraying. And the great part about these pouches is there's zero pesticides. We all know that lawns are not all created equally. That's why Sunday is a lawn care plan that carefully selects ingredients that are perfectly tailored to your lawn. No harsh chemicals, no unwanted chemicals, ingredients that you can trust. It's simple, it's friendly, and it works with nature. The ordering process could not be any simpler. Simply type in your address, you will see a Google Earth map of your house just to confirm. It'll show the square footage that you're working with and it perfectly tailors ingredients to ensure that your lawn is gonna be the talk of the neighborhood. And the great part is the plan is completely customizable and it ships directly to your door for free. So if you want a luscious green lawn, go to getsunday.com forward slash Mr. Build It. Use my promo code to get 20% off year-long subscription of customizable plans. I'm gonna get so much crap in the comments about using my island here, or peninsula, I should say, as my workbench. Be nice, folks. I'm doing the best I can here. I'll clean it up real nicely afterwards. Okay, uh, dry fit. It's gonna be the most nerve-wracking dry fit I've ever done in my life. But let's cowboy up. The point here is we want it to sit flush with, our sub, with the subflooring. So let me put this on like a hula hoop. And then we can put the particle board after that. As you can see, it's not square. And I don't want to lose my square here. So, because I also need this to be straight here so the door could follow the contour of the flooring. So, oh, a lot going on here. All right, she's snug as a bug in a rug. Uh, the nice thing is I don't have to use any kind of shims because I was nervous that it's gonna compromise any kind of strength. And I need all the strength that I can get for this thing to bear. Throw some screws in there and then we'll start working on the door. On second that, I'm not too thrilled about this, uh, what do you want to call it? Windowsill door frame. It's not perfectly square. Um, it's off. It's getting squished this way and I need it to get squished just a little bit that way. What's important today is uh, to get ahead of gluing up for the door. So I think I'm gonna start working on the door. Once it's set and glue and driving overnight, I'll then have time to jump back over here. I'm thinking using this thick two by 12 boards, gluing them up, they have to be this kind of dimensional lumber for the thickness. Keep in mind, this is a big spacing here. These are just three quarter inch boards, so we need the beefy, the girthiness to it. We're gonna let this puppy dry overnight, trim it to size, and then pray for the best. All right, I couldn't sleep last night. Um, worried about this whole door situation. Um, things are not lining up. The boards, I just kind of mock them up right here to see how the flow is gonna go. The most important part to me is that these joints, these lines right here, they line perfectly parallel uh, to my opening. Here's the problem. As you can see, this part is overlapping way too much. So that would mean I would have to cut right into my flooring, which the problem with that is it's gonna be way too noticeable that there's a door there. And my goal is to make sure this is as much hidden and concealed as absolutely possible. So what I'm gonna have to do is take out my casing that I just built here, put another floor joist going across, bring the section in, which would cause this opening to be the width of two or exactly two uh, wooden planks. Now I'm okay with it overlapping here a little bit because that will actually, the lid basically closes over it. Some of the flooring will make it even better. So take the casing off, put a new floor joist on, and then hopefully I can tighten this thing up. The downfall is I'm gonna have to basically 
reconfigure my pole casing, but uh, I think that's the least of my problems. All right, I think I got it. I feel so much better now. Now this is just a mock-up, just to make sure everything is working right. I added another uh, rafter or joist, floor joist down below here, so it's running across. And then I shortened my uh, windowsill doorway thing. And then this is all just mocked up right now, but it lines up perfectly. As you can see, I trimmed off this little lip there and that transition is going flawlessly. I got a little lip on here, but uh, like I said, that's gonna be fine because by the time the lid closes, it'll overlap it and it should be just fine. So feel pretty good about this. Let's start working on this door that's finally dried overnight. So our door is fully dried. The nice thing is I'll have to cut it down even smaller, which is great. It's better that way than you know, going completely opposite way and say it's too small. But I, I think I'm gonna pause on the door for a second because the trick is gonna to be to install it completely leveled. You don't want too many surfaces here. So I'm gonna put OSB right here and then particle board filled up everywhere to match the same plane. And then I can install my door to be completely flush with the top of the particle board. That might be my best chance for a bunch of uh-ohs. So if you've gotten to this point, you're like, what are you doing? Is that your way of covering this hole up? No, I'm gonna do that trick that guys in framing do. They'll like sheet a wall, and then to cut out the window, they'll just use a router. And it looks super cool. One perfect cut. Mwah. So I took the liberty and cleaned up my door. So it's ready. Now here's the hard part. I got these uh, concealed hinges. I'll link them in, oh, I got a sneeze coming up. Pass, pass. Okay, we're good, we're back in business. I got these concealable hinges, heavy duty, there's two of them. They advertise them that they could be adjusted in like three different directions. They mount uh, on the edge here, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to route that through because there's like three different tiers. Annoying, no template, and the instructions are in Chinese, like legitimately in Chinese. Then, once I get it mounted over there, the second problem is gonna go get it mounted here and lined up perfectly and have it drop down to the direction that I needed, inch and a half. There's a lot of moving parts here, so I'm gonna need to um, put on my thinking cap here and focus. Oh my God, I'm like at the splash zone at a sawdust factory. So that's the first tier. Now I gotta do the second tier, which is deeper. I don't like this design. I mean, I wish, the, this would've been fine if they gave me a little template, but doing this all freehand sucks. Oh, that's a nice tight fit. That's what she said. Hey, that's not bad for freehanding it at all, especially different layers in it. I'm not tapping it in all the way just because I don't want to get stuck and then only have one to get all the other ones in, but, and this one's already kind of snug. Oh, there it is. But uh, what is that, like 30 minutes per, per hole? But all in all, not terrible. A little sawdust, can't hurt you, right? All right, guys, I'll save you guys the misery of actually watching me do the rest of these three holes, so uh, let me do this real quick. A few moments later. That statement could not be more true. I think I'm done breathing all the sawdust. I got the sucker all done, check this out. Got these all done. Got those all done. Now we're gonna try to mount this thing. Hopefully there's no tears, because that's a lot of work. Put a little stop block right there just so this thing doesn't fall through. Oh, 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 that's gorgeous. It's actually dead nuts flush with this subflooring. This side's a little bit low, um, but there's flex in these hinges. So 
I'm gonna have to put a stopper uh, completely or a backer piece completely around so you could safely stand on this and not put any pressure on the hinges and only really use the hinges for pressure when it comes to opening and closing this thing. So it still needs a few minor micro adjustments, but I think that comes into play when we start running the floor. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna start running my flooring as much as I can to this section here to make sure I can manipulate anything I need to on that door before we start actually gluing down the flooring to that sticking door. And not to mention, I got a killer hardware for the handle and it's concealable as well. Freaking excited to show you. For the most part, everything is leveled. There's still gonna be maybe tiny bit, like a 16th of an inch more, just cause, you know, I don't, I didn't plane this super well. I always just use my hand planer. Uh, I got my little stoppers behind here, uh, kind of like a door jam stopper, so you could actually put weight on it and not hinder the hinges that are in the back there. So it's super sturdy. My only debate here right now is, and I, I don't know, it's, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place where what pattern are we doing here, right? So we could continue everything the way it's going, like this. That means I would make a cut right there and then it would flow through. Or, because there would be, you know, obviously a cut all the way around, <clears throat> well, the sides don't matter because they're gonna line up with uh, horizontal sides. Um, or, do we just leave a full sheet completely across? Like, which one would be far more noticeable? I don't know. Um, I think what I'll do is, um, maybe I got some scrap pieces I can cut and just kind of mock it up and kind of go from there. You know, I'm glad I did this mock-up because this stands out so much more. Um, it, I don't know, just kind of, maybe I'm, cause I'm staring at it directly and I'm looking for it, but I feel like that's only two planks. By the time we add a third plank, it's just gonna look too unnatural. So what we're gonna do is continue this pattern as much as we can. Uh, in fact, ooh, I think this would be cool. Instead of cutting my line perfectly straight here, where these natural transitions are, maybe that's where we create our profile. So basically, this piece would be attached to this board, so it would lift up about two inches there, and then this next piece would go, well, no, that's gonna lift up a whole giant thing. So, all right, well, we can't do natural transitions. We'll just, uh, we'll just lay them as they go. So we got our pieces all cut up. We're gonna have to glue it down. Now before we glue it down, we need to cut off this lip right here because that's gonna interfere with our door opening and closing and the lip on the last piece right here because that's gonna, that needs to go underneath. So that's gonna interfere a while. So that, that, that's, a, that's a simple problem to fix. I got a new nice blade on here. Start cutting it and then we'll start gluing it. You know, what am I doing? I'm gonna go use a table saw. This is gonna be so much quicker. <laughs> I'm cutting it by hand. Everything lines up good, but this is where we start gluing this uh, top down to the lid. I'm happy how it looks, uh, but these reveals are nice and tight, specifically back then and here, and everybody knows wood moves. So that's why I'm gonna have to glue it down. Uh, I was advised by the flooring experts that with flooring like this, you could either float it or glue it down, but you can't do both. You have to commit to one. And here, unfortunately, I have to do both. There's no way to add it on. So we're just gonna hope for the best. Get a nice level of glue across, flooring glue. Uh, I might have to later on do maybe a bead around this section just so it doesn't start moving. I don't know. I'm just trying to process this information as I'm going, but nothing to it but to do it.
And just to make sure it doesn't move on me, and we get good pressure, we get some plates on this sucker. These are what you would call my weird uncle that works out in the front yard starter set. Well, that about does it. We're gonna let it dry overnight, and then tomorrow we'll be able to start installing the hidden uh, door handle latch. And then I hope it works. I'll see you in the morning. She's dry. We gave her a nice 48 hours to do its thing. Put a little temporary screw in here to lift it up. Ooh, that's a heavy door. I need something to grab on with. Let's get some leverage in here. Okay. So I gotta make sure nothing's catching and snapping. I'm mostly concerned about the backside here. Oh, there's a little, little noise there. Let me see. So it seems that this backside needs a little bit more of a gap. This part is kind of okay. I don't know why it's catching here. I'm fearful, well, oh, there's a little flex right here in this, in this board. Yeah, it's grabbing right there. Huh. Interesting. I wonder if we glue the section down. Again, we don't want to glue too many things down here. If that'll just keep it down and keep it from getting damaged. So after opening and closing it a bunch of times, I think the problem is there's a, an eighth, this section right here is overlapping it by about an eighth of an inch. So to keep it from touching this piece, uh, I'm gonna have to trim that down. Downfall with that is it's gonna create larger reveals. Um, this section is dead perfect. I'm actually really surprised how it's kind of laying perfectly in it, but uh, this might need to have a little, Traxel action. So I trimmed off the back. The good news is nothing's catching anymore. Uh, and by trimming it off, I cut off anything that was broken. Um, the bad news is, uh, why is this thing, there it is. The bad news is that the reveal, it's more than I wanted it to have, which sucks, which really, really sucks. Um, I'm gonna try adjusting these hinges so maybe it pushes inward a little bit, but man, that really blows. I was really getting excited that this is gonna be picture perfect. So to make it a smoother close, I trimmed off about half an inch, maybe basically put a bevel right on this corner so it doesn't catch on this little lip here. So, so far, we have a smooth opening and closing latch door. The downfall, and again, we're gonna celebrate the good things first. Uh, the lines line up perfectly here. I have a, I'm happy with this gap here. This is the only section I'm not happy with. There's nothing we can do about it. Maybe a different kind of door hardware maybe, but it's functioning, it opens and closes smoothly. It just has like a quarter inch groove there, but you gotta pick and choose your battles. 
I know I'm gonna get destroyed in the comment section about it's not really a hidden door, but I think this is the best that at least I can do. Uh, if you have any ideas, make it even better, let me know. Uh, maybe hardware you recommend, but this is what I went with and I think next time I'll try something different. But let's go and move on to the latch because we can't always use this stupid screw here. So I picked up these hidden latches on Amazon. So the idea is you bore this inside, this is flush to the surface, and then you just push this down, flip it over, and now you have a smooth little handle to pick up. Now I played around in my head with the idea of possibly taking existing flooring and CA gluing it on here, but what I'm afraid of, because how tight of a precision these little gaps are, I'm afraid it's gonna get caught on something. Um, it's not my skill set. But stainless steel, nonetheless, will look relatively cool. I'm not a fan of this. I need to bore out a little bit more wider, but there's not a whole lot of lippage on the side of this bracket. So it's like an eighth at best on each side. Not my ideal fun time. why I never got into fine woodworking. I can't run a chisel to save my life. And most of the time it's dull chisels. I just don't have the patience to, and the discipline to just go and sharpen them every single time. I'm not cut out for that kind of life. That's how it's supposed to move. There we go, smooth as butter. I think we got it. Okay. There's that, press it in, lift it up. So I am discontent right now because this seems that it's, it pops too much to the eye. And maybe it's because it's stainless steel, but Kyle and I are putting our thinking heads together and see if we should recess this. And I'm sure everybody in the comment section is like, yes, do that. Um, and Kyle made a good point. In case somebody puts a rug out here, you want to be able to not have a little hump to it. So I'm going to try and sharpening one of my chisels here. And... Uh, Try to do a good job recessing about an eighth of an inch and hopefully it'll look a lot better. I've never been more nervous. Okay, we have a nice flush surface. Overall, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's a nine out of 10. It's probably like an eight out of a 10 uh, flush job. Uh, I wonder if I, I could put anything in here. Sometimes those uh, woodworker guys, they'll put like sawdust um, and all that stuff to kind of hide any tiny blemishes, but all in all, not bad at all. Not bad at all and it's nice and low. The only thing now I'm thinking is should I paint it? Should I paint it like a tan color? I kind of like the stainless steel, it looks nice and clean, but it's 
still discontent. Well, that is it for me, guys. I am overall pretty happy how this turned out. Uh, big learning curve, but overall happy. If there's any suggestions that you might have, I'd love to hear them in the comment section, whether it's certain hardware that you've used or certain techniques. But all in all, a little pat on the back for today. Thanks so much for watching this video. In the meantime, here's a video that I think you might enjoy.